Hello, welcome back to Strength Coach Tutorials. And today we're gonna add another piece to this annual planner project that we've been working on. We're gonna add some volume and intensity graphs at the bottom that I think add a pretty cool effect to the overall look of the sheet. So just to give you an idea what we're looking at, we're gonna add this volume and intensity graph down here at the bottom. And we're gonna be able to select what our mesocycle is, or our microcycle, sorry. And then we're gonna be able to get a little graph at the bottom that kind of tells us what we're looking at. So I've already gone ahead and outlined some boxes here on the side. I've gone three boxes down and then all the way across. And then for the graph, I've gone five boxes down because I like to use five categories and all the way across. And I've just highlighted those with some big borders and I've outlined them um, so that I can put the words in there that I want. Okay, so I also like to put 10 point spacing in between all of my sections. I think that breaks it up nicely and the overall effect ends up looking pretty cool. So the first thing we want here is we're gonna merge some cells so we can create some categories. So I'm gonna use the merge and center function and I'm gonna call this microcycle. And my font is white, so I'm just gonna make that black so we can see it. Um, and then I'm gonna put the volume and intensity in. So we'll go volume first. And then I use one to 10 scale. I'm gonna make all these fonts black for a second. And then intensity, merge and center, one to 10. And then we'll just keep it um, the same as everything else. We'll um, left justify it. We'll give it the same gray background that we're using on our other um, categories here. Give it the white font. And I'm gonna put some borders in there to make it look the same as all of our other ones. So there you go, so that looks nice. Then the microcycle, we're gonna give it a thick border all the way across because I wanna separate that from the volume and intensity graph. So I'm gonna use a thick border. And then through here, to keep it similar to what we've been doing up there, we'll use a dotted border. So we'll go to more borders, pick the dotted, and we'll put it in the middle. So there. Now it kind of is the same as the other um, things that we're doing on our template to keep the formatting similar. Down the side here, we're gonna give it the gray thickness, and the word I like to write in here is workload. So first I'm gonna merge all these cells, and then I'm gonna type in workload. And you're gonna see that it's actually turned sideways. So a neat little trick here is if you go up to this a b arrow function at the top you can actually angle your font sort of any way you want you can put it on an angle you can put it on a downward angle but I like to turn it up so that we can go workload across the side here and then the mesocycles I like to use I'm gonna merge and center all these cells so that I can um, type in there the mesocycles I like to use are perform color these first so we can see the text as I type it in. So I color, usually color perform um, white or red, sorry. I'm going to make sure that all these are not all spun around, which I think they are. Uh, the next one I color is orange. I call this load plus. And then yellow for load. and then green for base, and then finally a gray or a light blue for deload. And those are the categories I like to use. Those fonts aren't showing up the way I want, so I'm just gonna make them black and then left justify them so they match everything else. So then, what we wanna do is we wanna create um, in the microcycle box, a way to select the actual microcycle we want, be perform load plus, load base, or deload, and then have a graph auto-populate down here. I've done this effect in an earlier video, but just to tie it into our actual annual planning here, we'll work on it again. So we're gonna use a data validation, and we'll go through all these cells because we wanna use the same one. So we'll go data, data validation, and list, and what we're actually gonna do is just put commas. So we'll use a P for perform, comma, 
L plus for load plus, comma, L for load, comma, B for base, comma, D for deload, and OK. So now what you'll see is in any of these cells, we should be able to select the P, L, whatever we're looking at. So the next thing we have to do is create a conditional format that will automatically color the cell once we do that. So we're going to manage rules for the current selection and we're going to make a new rule and we'll put format only cells that contain actually we'll do this for all the cells. So we'll select them all at the same time. Conditional format manage new rule format only cells that contain cell value specific text containing and we want it P for perform and we want to make that red whenever we select P. So OK and then go all the way through. So now when we select the P the cell should highlight red. And just to make that look nicer, we're going to center justify all those. And we'll make the text black. So P, performance. So now we got to do that for all of our different colors. So we'll go um, conditional format, new rule, format cells that contain specific test, text L plus for load plus. We want that to be orange. OK. OK, so if we select an L plus, should be orange. Format cells that contain again, new rule. Format cells, specific text, L for load. We want that to be yellow. OK, new rule. Format sex that contain specific text containing B for base. We'll make those green. OK, and then finally we'll go through, go conditional format, new rule, and format cells that contain specific text, and D for deload will make it that bluish grayish color that we're using. I think it's that one. It's that one. OK, apply. So then we should be able to select any of those colors and have it kind of highlight there. Okay, so what you may have noticed now is that once we've gone through all of our rules, now that we have L+, plus, it's not actually highlighting orange, it's highlighting yellow. So what we have to do is change the order of all these rules. So what we do is select all of these cells that we want to use, go to conditional formatting, go manage rules, and then you just need to put the orange one above the yellow one because they actually um, happen in order. So what it's seeing right now is it's going down the list and it's seeing the L and saying, oh, it's L and then turn it yellow. But what we want it to do is actually look to see if it's L plus first. So all you have to do is select that rule and then hit the arrow key. And as long as the orange one is above the yellow one, once we hit apply, you'll see that our L plus has actually now become orange. So if we just put the L, now it's yellow. Okay, so once we've got that squared away, now I want to go to the volume intensity and make that a one out of 10 scale. Okay, so the next piece that we want to work on is we're going to actually add um, the volume intensities now. <clears throat> so what I like to do is put these on a 1 to 10 scale. So I'm just going to type those all in there um, just so we can take a look at them. So we'll go 2, 3. If I just drag that across, it'll go all the way up to 10. Delete those off. We're going to use a color scale here to um, grade those out. So what I like to use is a conditional format, new rule. And it's a two color scale. We're going to make the lowest one um, light blue and the highest one a darker blue. Okay, so that actually takes us through purple. So we'll kind of make it a little bit more blue. So we'll switch to over to these two. Okay, so what you're going to see now is as we make um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, they are all um, a different shade of blue. I use blue because typically when you're graphing volumes are in blue and then intensities are in red. So we're going to do the same thing for intensity. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then we'll drag that over to 10 and we'll add in a red color scale for this one. So conditional formatting, new rule and we'll make it red. So we'll add a, a lighter red for the bottom one and a darker or a heavier red for the top one. So then these are now in red. So. Now what I want to do is a graph here at the top. When this 
These, this cell contains performance. We want it to graph all the way up to perform. So we'll do a conditional format for that. And what it's going to look like is conditional formatting, new rule, and use a formula and equals this cell. And we're going to take off the dollar sign so that we can drag this formula. And then we want it to equals quotation marks p quotation marks so that says when f39 equals p then we want to format this cell and we want to color it in red okay okay and you'll see now what it's done is it will color in that top cell so all we have to do now is apply that conditional formatting so we're going to manage rules go back to this one put the dollar sign around the 39 so that the number doesn't change apply and now it'll go through all of them so what it says is when this one equals p then we want it to color in all of them red okay so now we're going to do it for l l plus so same type of deal we'll highlight these four cells conditional format new rule use a formula equals f39 we're going to remove the dollar sign from the f keep it on the 39 equals quotation marks l plus quotation marks and format we want it to color in in orange okay okay and so now if we switch this to L plus we should get orange and we'll do that for these three cells for L new rule use a formula equals F39 take away the dollar sign equals quotation marks L quotation marks and when that happens we want it to be yellow okay Finally, base, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, equals F39, take away the dollar sign, equals quotation marks, B quotation marks. When that happens, we want it to be green. Okay. Okay. And finally, we want deload. So, new rule, same thing, use a formula equals F39, take away the dollar sign, format. We want it to be that blue color we were using, and when it equals D load, okay. So what you're gonna see now is if I choose performance, it goes red, L plus, it goes orange, L, it goes yellow, B, it goes green, and D, it goes um, blue. If we drag this all the way across, you're going to get a nice little effect here with your graphs. I'm just going to fix the, the uh, borders here, make them back thick. So then all the way across, whenever you select a box up here, you actually get a little graph being formed down at the bottom. Okay, And this can add um, a nice little effect. And if we want to add even something else, we could just put something like this where we go a border, more borders, and maybe put a white border in between. Okay, so now it cuts it up with a white border um, and adds a little bit of a graph function or just to show you what it might look like with a gray border. More borders, color automatic, we'll do like a darker gray. Put those two lines in the middle, hit OK. Um, and now it'll cut it up with a, a gray border through all of your squares. So you can use those graphs to easily just show what your focus is during each um, microcycle. And they actually add a cool little effect. So if you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel. Um, don't forget to visit my website at www.dsmstrength.com. Um, Truthfully, I haven't been that active on the website in a little while, but I, I add blogs and links to videos and all kinds of things on there. Um, and if you need anything, you can reach out to dsmstrength at gmail.com um, for any help with your templates or any questions you might have. Thank you.